Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be more on the finance slash investing side and I basically want to talk about circulating supply versus fully diluted valuations. So typically in crypto, uh, when you look at any token, these two numbers are probably like the most important ones or one of the most important ones when quantitative, quantitatively assessing a token. So for this video, we're basically going to cover first like tokenomics 101. You probably may know a bit about this, but we'll go over it again. We'll talk about what is circulating supply, what's an FDV or fully diluted valuation, the difference in the two, and most importantly, how to actually think about the two. Because people who say that, oh, you just need to worry about this number versus the other are completely wrong. <laughs> Uh, both of them matter, but you need to understand the dynamics between the two and the dangers uh, that both of them potentially hold. So anyway, let's jump into it. Um, where are we? Cool. So tokenomics 101. Let's say there's a bunch of humans who come together and they start a new project. Let's call this project Zebra Coin. <laughs> I don't know why I came up with that. But Anyway, so zebra coin, they decide there's going to be 100 zebras in instance, and we'll call it Zeb is the currency. Now, we're going to say that 10 Zebs <laughs> go to the team. Uh, we'll say 20 go to investors. And let's just kind of say the remaining 70 go to community in some way, shape, or form. And this could be used for yield farming, um, it could be used for airdrops or grants. So anyway, we've kind of established uh, these three um, tiers per se. So from here, what happens? Well, essentially what we have now is our basic kind of token, uh, like token cap table, you could say. So this kind of tells us like how each party is incentivized and by how much. So let's now assume that Zebra Coin lists on some decentralized exchange and the price is one dollar, and we'll keep it really simple. So jumping back to the agenda, the circulating supply. Um, sorry. This is uh, meant to be circulating supply and uh, market cap. Oops, completely messed up. It's meant to be market cap versus fully diluted valuations. So the, mark, uh, the circulating supply will basically depend on... So in order for us to derive the market cap, we need the circulating supply. So let's say the team gets their 10 tokens after one year investors get it in one month and maybe uh, five tokens are given to the community on day zero. So what we've got here is a bit of an interesting setup, right? Because community will get kind of first, the first amount of tokens in the market, the investors might get the next kind of batch and then the team might get the third. Now, of course, it doesn't just help with the time frame. We also have to know over what duration do they get these? So maybe the team gets this uh, over one year, right? And the investors get this uh, exactly in one month. And the community will get five tokens on day zero. And then the remaining uh, seven, oh, whoops. The remaining 65 in two years. So... With a setup like this, we have a bit of an interesting one because if we were to kind of plot this on a graph, the community allocation, right? Let's, this is terrible scales, but whatever. Um, 50 and 100. Cool. So the, and yeah, so the community is going to start off here at five and these are all the tokens in existence. And let's put one month and then we'll put, uh, let's say, one year. 
so uh and we've got 65 probably somewhere here this is really rough by the way so uh <laughs> kind of ignore the scales so this line over here will basically represent the community's share of tokens over time now we look at the team so let's uh let's put this as community now, the team, on the other hand, will start off at zero, but in one year, they should reach about here, which is, which is about here at 10. So this is going to be our team. And then we've got for our investors, they've got 20 tokens so we can let's just put 20 here in one month they basically go well they just start here so it's a straight line up and we'll draw across here cool so this is of course a super rough graph and i think i could have drawn this better but hopefully it demonstrates a point where you can kind of see or understand how the supply of new tokens comes out onto the market as time progresses so what we kind of have here is an interesting situation because the nature of this uh, of this kind of graph shows the different parties are basically being capitalized at different points in time. Now, this uh, circulating supply is defined by a point in time specifically. So the circulating supply at one month would be the team allocation the community allocation and the investor allocation, which roughly looks like about 31 to 32 tokens, right? But on day zero, because the team starts off with nothing, the community starts with five, the circulating supply is five. And within a year, at this point in time, the team has 10, the community has, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. In one year, the community will have 32. If we extend this graph out, it would be a lot longer. So um, going back, 32, uh, 32 plus 20 plus 10, which gives us 62. So now we've kind of got like some rough key moments in time. And this is what means, now this is, Sorry. The fact that we now have the circulating supplies means we can calculate the market cap. So let's assume a constant price of $1 throughout this time. So what this means is the market cap is going to be $5 here, $32 here, and $62 here. And this is really the crux of like understanding uh, circulating supply and market cap. Because what you have here at time zero is... There's only the community that is buying and holding these tokens. So they're, they're the only ones who start off with tokens. So if they sell the tokens, there's only five out of the 100 tokens that can be sold, but also bought, which means that if there's a lot of buy pressure, each token could be worth a lot more because because there's only five tokens, essentially, right, at day zero, it can go one of two ways. Either... A lot of people want these five tokens or people want to sell these five tokens. Now, let's assume it's kind of somewhere in between and the token still stays for a dollar. Now, at the one month mark, this is really interesting because these investors, if let's say they purchased these tokens at uh, 50 cents, and this is a bit of like a in-between example, They've basically made twice their money. So if we expect them to pull out their principal because they think it's a risky investment, we could be seeing up to 15 tokens being sold, which given there are only five tokens on the market previously, that is a bit alarming. So it's not always. Sometimes these investors might actually be really happy and they're long-term believers of the project, but their incentive to do so tapers off because, uh, I mean... They've got all of their tokens up front. So if you're kind of looking at the this token to buy, 
you'd really have to understand like how is the circulating supply changing? Who is getting what tokens and at what price? Now, if let's say these investors had received their tokens at 0.01, now the price is $1, that's a hundred time return for them, which believe me, <laughs> happens in crypto because that's how badly some tokenomics can get structured. Um, and what you have to really think about is, is there enough fundamental value to sustain the price or is this just a bunch of hype from a tiny float, right? And that's kind of where it gets a lot more nuanced. But anyway, I'm not, I'm not gonna go too deep into that. That's just really kind of the dynamics at play. So zooming out a sec, uh, the other bit here, which we have is the fully diluted valuation. So at these three points in time, the token price, let's kind of assume it starts off at a dollar, then it might go to like 50 cents, and then uh, maybe one day it hits $10. So at, I'm just going to call it T0, T1, and T2. So at T0, the market cap, as we saw above, is five dollars and the fully diluted valuation is a hundred at time one which is over here we have the market cap to equal let's say 50 cents uh, in a circulating supply of 32 so 32 times 50 cents gives us 16 dollars and the fully diluted valuation would be $50. And at time two, the market cap is equal to, uh, how many do we say, $60, um, $10, and there's 62 tokens, so we'd have 620, and the fully diluted valuation would be 1,000. Cool. So now we've kind of got like our range of possibilities. This lets us understand things from a more empirical point of view because what the fully diluted valuation, and I think I might've completely missed this, whoops, is this is basically the total number of coins multiplied by the price versus the market cap is the available number of coins multiplied by price. And that is the fundamental distinction between the two. Now, I've heard some really <laughs> misguided stuff uh, where people say, ah, oh, the fully diluted valuation doesn't matter because it only the market cap's the only thing that is actually real because that's how much money is in the coin. Well, as we can see, that's kind of false because let's say you bought the token at teaser thinking it's a low market cap, but actually you've got this massive supply coming out you're, you don't know how that new supply is going to influence the price. So really what you're trying to understand is that if there's only a tiny portion of the float available on the market, right, what happens when all of this remaining amount comes out? And some people say, well, I'll think about it when it happens. But if you want to long-term invest in something, the fully diluted valuation matters a lot because that's what tells you how much of a percentage of the network you're acquiring for every dollar you spent, right? So kind of zooming out, if you have two lending protocols, right? Uh, let's call one A and the other one's B. And one has a market cap of say 10 million and a fully diluted valuation of, uh, let's say, 1 billion. Actually, you know what? Let's just go 10 billion. And then you've got token B, which has a market cap of, say, um, 500 million and a fully diluted valuation of 2 billion. This is really interesting, right? Because what you have here in this scenario, one fourth of the supply is unlocked versus, actually, let's just make this simple. Um, Let's keep it at a billion. Uh, yeah, cool. 
So in this one, you only have 1% of the float available on the market because 10%, uh, 1% of 10 billion is 10 million. And in this example, you have 50% of the float available on the market. So it's a really skewed equation because what you're saying is you don't know how the remaining uh, $9.9 .9 billion of value is going to come out on the market. And in fact, this thing is worth 10 times more. But objectively, it's not because actually this thing has more money inside it because its market cap is a lot bigger and sustained. So in some sense, you're kind of looking at the current versus the future potential. And the argument for investing in the first one for A is people say, well, there's only 10, the market cap is only 10 million. If another $10 million gets pumped into this, then cool, the price will basically 2x from here. So I can look at market cap ob objectively and say, if the market cap pumps to say 500 million, I make a 50 times of my money. But that isn't really true because what you're saying at the same time as simultaneously is that if you expect this to 50x based on market cap, the fully diluted valuation would be 0 0.5 trillion, um, <laughs> which is absurd. So this may sound like a crazy example, but I kid you not, there are tokens out there which will have insane uh, <laughs> kind of numbers to them where like a lot of what you see nowadays is say a 100 million uh, market cap token with the fully diluted valuation being like $3 billion. And what you have to realize about private mar markets or professional investors, the only thing they care about is the fully diluted valuation. Everything else is completely full of shit because the FDV that private investors are looking at is typically within the range of 10 million to 100 million, sometimes on the higher side. I mean, sometimes you get some crazy stuff at 200, but whatever. So if this new token comes out on the market and the market cap is say 100 million and its FTV is 3 billion and private investors bought at say a 50 million FTV because that's the only thing they care about because they're actually very astute. They've got essentially a simple uh, 60x on their money. <laughs> and that's what kind of people sometimes forget about fully diluted valuations. If you're a retail or you're kind of playing on a liquid market sense, all you're looking is how much more money can come into this. And once more money comes into this, I can get out, take my money and flip. And if that's your strategy, looking at market cap is actually not a bad idea. But if you're looking at this from a 10 year perspective, the fully diluted valuation is in, like extremely critical because otherwise you're buying something where people who acquired it a lot cheaper than you can sell on you, which will basically depress prices. And given liquidity in crypto can always be thin or and it can be fleeting, um, you're in really dangerous territory. So to kind of recap it, um, when you have a new token, you'll kind of have the token set up with the different parties and over different time horizons, understanding how that plays out over time, the incentives of all the different parties then understanding the market cap as time progresses with the fully di diluted valuation is extremely important because otherwise um, you're entering yourself into a game where you could be essentially the, the loser <laughs> in some senses. So all that to say, um, you have to know what sort of time frame you're playing on here and based on that decide whether you care about market cap or you don't. I'm personally more traditional and I care about fully diluted valuation because I want to know for every dollar I put in, how what percentage of the network do I own? And if my $1 is getting me something absurdly tiny um, because the fully diluted value, full FTV is really insane, then I'm out. Whereas if I was a trader, and I saw something that had a low market cap, then I could say, cool, as long as this doubles, I'll exit and I'm done. So I guess it really comes down to like, are you a trader or investor? Traders care about market cap, investors care about fully diluted valuations. And yeah, that's really about it. I hope you found this video useful. If you like stuff like this, let me know 
I'll post more of it. Um, I could ramble about this stuff for days. Thanks, everyone, and look forward to hearing your feedback on this. Bye.